everybody doing their part and getting together on this and making New Orleans a better place, New Orleans and the River Region a better place, was a major reason why the fair is being held here. New Orleans has always been a major tourist attraction. This simply makes it a better tourist attraction. This main serves a major portion of Oklahoma City due to the fact that it is a 60-inch main, which is five feet across on the inside. Uh, it is a major feeder to the city. It affects mostly the east part of Oklahoma City. Oklahomans first became aware of Terry Lynch's condition last February when doctors told the 22-year-old mother of three she would die if she did not undergo a dangerous and expensive double transplant. Lynn suffered from primary pulmonary hypertension. It attacks the heart and lungs. The young woman's family made a plea for a chance to save her, and Oklahomans responded. It was known from the start that Terry might not be right for the operation, and that having it would not guarantee she would survive. Oklahomans began collecting money anyway, if not for Terry, then at least for her three children. The young woman's plight captured the attention and the hearts of people all across the state. February 25th was declared Terry Lynn's Day, and service groups turned an unpleasant task into a festive mission. The transplants would cost $250,000. They collected more than $300,000. And on April 2nd, Terry and her family headed for Pittsburgh, where the young woman would enter the hospital for tests. Terry Lenz has not returned home since then. She's been waiting. This morning, the wait was over. And this evening, she is resting and recovering with a new heart and lungs. It will still be a long battle for Terry Lenz. She may still die. But at least now, she's been given another chance with a disease they call terminal. Charles Schnitzer, News 4. With a great big heave and a few sighs, a 12-foot wall is lifted from a concrete floor by Alabama Southern Baptist Church members. They've come to Stillwater to build a church for their fellow church members. It will encompass 3,000 square feet and seat 150 congregation members by the time it's finished in August. Most of the volunteers from Alabama are retired people, but only a few are professional construction workers. We do it because we, we want to do it for the Lord. We have a great church back home with a great spirit and a lot of mission uh, emphasis in our church, one kind or another. And this is just one of those mission emphasis. This is the first church these volunteers have set about building, and they're having so much fun, they want to build another one just like it. The Alabamans hope that by this Friday, it will look more like a church. Another group will then come in to put on the finishing touches and the trim in what will be called the Countryside Baptist Church the first Southern Baptist Church in Stillwater in 31 years. Bella Shaw, News 4, in Stillwater. The committee heard from a number of education specialists. They said over the past two years, state funding of education has gone down. And that's bad because most of a school system's money comes from the state. Oklahoma has now slipped back into the position it was in a number of years ago, ranked 40th in the nation in terms of education. 
just because the fact that, that we had a taste of, of what quality can be in all areas of, of life because of the infusion of rapid, in a rapid uh, time frame of a lot of money in, in all of the areas, not just education, but other areas of the state. And now that we've had that cut back, it is forcing us as a state to begin to examine what kinds of uh, alternatives we must uh, consider in order to, to get back on track. How long would it take to get back on track? Weldon Davis says at least five years. Money was the word that kept coming up again and again. But that is a word that has not been very welcome in the legislature the last few years. Bella Shaw, News 4. You are looking at documentation that drinking and driving don't mix. A deadly fact proven time and again to be true. Still, despite graphic and tragic warnings, there are those who continue to drive drunk. It is unfortunate, and most would agree it's stupid. We have 100 plus 20x minus 50. Any questions on that? The real tragedy of the drinking and driving story is to be found here. One out of every four fatal crashes in Oklahoma involves a young person. In a young drinking driver, you have the, uh, the fact that he is an inexperienced driver along with an inexperienced drinker. When you combine the two together, really you have uh, a lot more probable ch or chance that they're going to have an accident. It just depends on how strong-willed you are to not do it. If, you, if you're really against it, you won't do it. But if the pressure's on, you might. High school educators say peer pressure plays an important role in drinking among teens. It is that time of year, school's almost over, proms, parties, and lakes are on most young people's agendas. Like everybody says, it's not going to happen to me. It always happens to the other guy. And then they find out it can happen right. to them. Then it's too late. But it's not too late now for our young people to be cautioned, warned, and maybe even threatened. After all, to quote a highway patrolman, we'd rather send them to graduation than to the graveyard. Dan Slocum, News 4. real difficult for us to enforce that uh, that law uh, as it stands today. As I was sharing with you, there was some legislation uh, proposed this year, uh, Senate Bill 232, that would give us some teeth and give us some more of ability and capability in making sure that uh, daycare homes and daycare centers follow licensing standards and laws. And what happened to it? Well, just last week or the week before, it died in committee. You have to understand that for the next two years, I'm not for new turnpikes. You all understand that. And, uh, and, and so we, we, if you want to breathe life and hope eternal, that, and for the next governor and for the people and the bond issue, that's fine. You know, I'm not opposed to that. But if they should stand alone and not together in a bill that just says you have to do this or you can't do anything. Newspaper. 
two to one, and when I got my bill in March of 84. I have a uh, motion with item. I suppose that's item. As long as you have men who, for whatever reason, need someone like this to you, it's going to be there. But as I have said earlier, I want you to be concerned about your neighborhood. We get them out of your neighborhood, and wherever they go, then we'll have to deal with it over there again. But right now, I'm concerned about your neighborhood. The barrier to passage of the bill is a provision to allow police to use roadblocks to catch drunk drivers. Oklahoma County has used roadblocks in the past, but the practice was stopped because of possible legal problems. The state Senate voted to return the bill to committee after several senators complained the roadblocks would be unconstitutional. They've been able to deal with this problem effectively even though we didn't have this law. Mothers Against Drunk Drivers members have lobbied hard for the new law. MAD members feel that other provisions in the bill to stiffen drunk driving penalties are equally important as the roadblock proposals. The rest of the bill is very important to the uh, drinking and driving situation that we have now. The roadblock bill was very important too, but we don't want the whole bill to be defeated just because of this one thing that they want to take out. Bill backers have promised to bring the amended bill back for a House vote on Wednesday and a Senate tally on Thursday. They want to make sure Oklahoma has a tougher drunk driving law before lawmakers go home for the summer. Scott Wallace, News 4. For seven years, Midwest City Police Detective Jack McKelvey has investigated evidence of crime scenes like this, bent over a magnifying glass looking for clues through a small lens. It's tedious and most importantly time-consuming work, but work the department has to have done. But thanks to the wonders of high technology, this process will be stepped up considerably in the future. By using closed-circuit video monitors, technicians at the Midwest City PD can examine evidence closer and quicker than ever before. It's called the target system. It magnifies the image on the monitor and enables the technician to compare it to other evidence. It's the first of its kind in the country, developed by McKelvey and his partner, Chuck Marston. Pioneering is nice, but when day-to-day -day workload is our main consideration. You know, we want to do the work, we want to do it fast, and we want to do it better than we could in the past and that's all we're interested in. The wheels are already in motion to begin producing the target system for less than $5,000. Police officials in Midwest City feel the money is well spent and hope the machine will enable their officers in the lab and their district attorney in the courtroom. Kevin Ogle, News 4 in Midwest City. Initially, it does uh, kind of make people look and see that they think they're getting bad cheese, but this is not our intent, and we have plenty of cheese available and uh, will not hamper people getting cheese. It might, might uh, delay them a day or two at the, some of the locations, but we will have cheese in there too. They were on a drinking binge in the cemetery and just on a whim picked at random the grave that was tampered with and they used their hands and knives to dig the grave up. Okay. 
I need to go through this. Hey, let me just back up now. Let me grab. I'll grab. Clark Raid, House Bill 15. That land, those people have got to have stock water from some. And the additional money goes into the conservation fund over there. A 16.3% increase. It's very unfortunate that the Senate uh, has the problem that they have. Um, and I'm very sorry that, uh, that this situation occurred, but uh, it's just one of those things that we couldn't prevent on our side. Really had enough time to even hardly think about, you know. The we have to have the emergencies on, on several of these pieces of legislation. It would be irresponsible government to, to enact those laws and those appropriations uh, without the emergency. And so if they don't finish their work, I will call them in a special session. George is talking about. I believe in what he's saying in his songs that we should listen and that he's got a message and that someday everything will be all right. And I think that's kind of what he's singing in. And that was one reason I did it. Number two was to see all the beautiful people, meet all the people, and just have a good time. And last but not least was for the money. I really, I just love it. <laughs> Twenty-five people needed help finding their way out of the burning structure. Most of the 60 residents were away at church when the blaze broke out. The only fatality was this woman, found in a basement shower. Despite efforts to revive her, she died at a local hospital. For a while, it looked like the fire would be controlled, but the blaze quickly spread and involved the rest of the building. Firemen were fighting a losing battle. The homeless were brought here to the Red Cross Center. They have lost everything. Volunteers are relocating them at a nearby Salvation Army dormitory. For the time being, they will rest and try and plan for the future. Just try to build everything back up. That's all I can do. Try to find an apartment. And I do have a job, which is a, a benefit there, and I can kind of slowly get back on my feet, I hope. A majority of the residents are elderly. The loss of their prescription medicine had Red Cross officials looking for help. We do have a nurse here working with us. Uh, she is able to contact the doctor, verify the prescriptions, and then contact the pharmacy and make arrangements for a refilling of those prescriptions for the people. The cause of the fire is believed to be arson. Fire officials were called to this same building yesterday. Kevin Ogle, News 4. And I would say that we will be involved, uh, uh, have been, and the National Guard is here and will remain here, Mayor, as long as, uh, as you feel is necessary. All the programs that the state has are in effect. Uh, we will ask the legislature that the House and the Senate will be in session this week to modify the appropriation bill so that we can move immediately for state assistance.
due process. And when you couple this with the denial of a record, I think that, that that alone should invoke the powers of this court, the superintendent controls. We feel very strongly we've been singled out and that we don't owe a dime for 1979. The Board of Equalization has ruled we don't owe anything. Judge Cannon has ruled we don't owe anything, and, but the, the battle goes on. I'm going to try to do everything I can to regain my health. I'm 74 years of age, and there ain't anything I can do to recover the financial loss I've had. I've even spent the money that I had set aside to bury me. I don't have any life insurance. So uh, uh, unless somebody comes to my help and I die, I'll go to a pauper's grave. In other words, we're going almost all the way around it. And just from 23rd Street here, through, and uh, you're going to be in charge. Uh, okay, but you anybody you want to put up there? Do you want me to? Or? Well, I'm probably going to need you here to talk to you. Soon. We've had frequent reports of uh, various locations scattered throughout the city that possibly they may have seen the child. But up to this point in time, we don't have anything concrete. Uh, we're investigating any, every possibility, including foul play, if necessary. Uh, at this point in time, we don't have any reason to believe that there is foul play involved, but we're certainly not overlooking that possibility. We're going to expand the search. Uh, we have been searching all day, and we're going to expand it this evening and start searching one square mile blocks, uh, beginning shortly here around the area of Tailstar Park, right here at uh, Douglas and Northeast 23rd Street. The other day there was an editorial in the Washington Post saying just what I've said, that to go beyond here and suggest anything other than ethical behavior goes beyond the bounds of propriety. Do you want to look him in the eye and say that you didn't accuse him of criminal activity? Uh, he knows I didn't. Did you not suggest a, judi a possible judicial investigation? I said that the Reagan Justice Department would be very likely... Now what do you think that suggests? Well, they, they were parking? <laughs> Mr. Jackson and the Pope were out in the boat having prayer, as religious people do. And the stiff wind came along and blew off the Pope's holy cap. And he reached for it and could not get it. And both of us tried to get it with a long fishing stick, and we couldn't. And of course, what happened was Jesse Jackson got up and walked across the water and got the cap. <laughs> <laughs> Brought it back. The Pope expressed his thanks to me. And the, pro the press was in the next boat. And they saw this entire event. Headlines next day, Jesse can't swim. <laughs>
This afternoon, the Tulsa medical examiner positively identified one of the bodies found yesterday as that of Tulsa radio reporter Valerie Shaw Hartzell. She had been strangled to death. Yesterday, suspect Gary Allen Walker led police to the bodies of Hartzell and another woman in remote areas outside of Tulsa. The other body is thought to be that of Janet Jewell of Beggs, who was last seen May 23rd leaving a friend's house. Meanwhile, officials are continuing to question Walker on the belief that he may have been involved in other state murders. Walker was captured without incident late Saturday. But late this afternoon, an OSBI spokesman told News 4 they have tentatively eliminated Walker as a suspect in three other murders in Okmulgee, Ada, and Tulsa, but still believe he may have been involved in the murder of a Vanita woman. Oklahoma City FBI officials say they are considering whether to file kidnapping charges against Walker, and they say Walker could fit the profile of other recent serial killers. If in fact, he is uh, guilty of this, and of course there are allegations right now, but if in fact he is, it, it's a serial type murder where the victims are usually uh, unknown. Uh, they're not known by the, uh, the, the suspect or the subject, and uh, it would fall along those lines, yes. Walker pleaded innocent today to charges of bail embezzlement and attempted rape. Homicide charges in two or more state murders are expected to be filed in the next few days. Jeff Fowler, News 4. We're still talking about this year's budget, that the funds are there, mm -hmm. and if the pools are ready, uh, you know, other than, than personnel, uh, uh, I'm kind of like Jack. If the, it's going to be hard enough on the kids the way it is, and at least let's give them a, a, a two or three weeks or whatever we can because we were committed to the people of the city last year when we adopted this budget. Sure. The right to vote, it's not just the Libertarian Party, it's anybody's right to vote for any political candidate, any political party. The fact that we have a short amount of time with a tremendous amount of signatures, plus the fact that weather interfered with our ballot drive, plus the fact that some of our petitioners were arrested for trying to exercise their constitutional right to petition, all seems to me to make a very strong case to put the Libertarian Party on the ballot or to rule the law is unconstitutional. Yeah! 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 Yeah!